All right. Um, so the Senate has put out again the Careers Act. Um, this was originally done in <clears throat> 2015, I believe. Yes. And what it is stands for Compassionate Access Research Expansion and Respect States Act. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, I guess in the environment that we're in right now, it's, it's fine and dandy. You know, it's basically a protection piece. <clears throat> it doesn't really move the ball forward except for some real token on paper only protections. Um, so a bipartisan group of senators and representatives has reintroduced legislation to protect patients in states where medical marijuana has been legalized. Keyword there is protecting patients. Um, the bill introduced Thursday known as the Compassionate Access Research Expansion and Respect States Act. It would not legalize medical marijuana federally, but would amend federal law to officially allow states to set their own medical marijuana policies. Under the bill, Veterans Affairs physicians will be able to, to recommend medical marijuana to their veteran patients, which they are currently barred from doing. You should probably just set that aside and make it its own thing and just do that first just to kind of break the ice um because that's that's just a given like how stupid is this where you're making veterans suffer right when you just send them to work i don't know just it's too much shit to absorb here <clears throat> i got mixed feelings about this thing and we'll be lucky if it even gets uh, uh any air if it gets to see any light of the day the bill would prevent federal law enforcement from prosecuting patients, doctors, and caregivers in states that choose to legalize medical marijuana. The sponsoring senators are Al Franken, Democrat, Minnesota, Cory Booker, Democrat, New Jersey, Lisa Murkowski, Republican, Alaska, Kirsten Gillibrand, Democrat, New York, Rand Paul, Re Republican from Kentucky, and Mike Lee, Republican from Utah. Now, that might be surprising to some, but I've I, somewhere I read about how Mike Lee has come around on medical marijuana, although <clears throat> he hasn't come like completely around. He's come to a certain degree. The House version of the bill is sponsored by Representative Steve Cohen and Don Young. So again, it's bipartisan. Federal policy in this space has long overstepped the boundaries of common sense, fiscal prudence, and compassion, said Booker in a statement. This bill will help ensure that people who can benefit from medical marijuana, children, the sick, and our veterans, can do so without worrying about the federal government standing in the way. <clears throat> Young issued a statement of support speaking to the problems faced by his constituents in Alaska, which has legalized both medical and recreational marijuana. I've heard from my constituents who have experienced the many challenges associated with the conflicts between state and federal laws. He said, including business owners who are preventing or prevented from using the banking system and tax code, veterans who cannot access alternatives to opioids, and even the state which has run into problems collecting tax revenues. I would argue that everybody should have Alternatives to opioids. Everybody, including little kids that they give opioids to. No excuse on this opioids thing, man. To start talking. Why haven't, why isn't the discussion right now about marijuana? Like, oh, we need to change the, the topic from marijuana being bad and a gateway drug to worse things. We know that's just total garbage. There's no proof of any of it. There's no proof marijuana is even bad. You can't even say what you want to try to prove when you're saying marijuana is bad. Oh, marijuana is bad because it's a gateway to some other harder drug. That's, that's not really true. And besides that, that wouldn't make marijuana bad. That would be the person doing it being like, oh, this marijuana is not good enough, so I need to go to something harder. 
So get the fucking gateway thing. Just stop with it already. And then you got the next one where, oh, marijuana is, you know, causes brain damage. Developing mind. No, it don't. There's no proof of it. And there's actually proof of the opposite. And there's definitely only correlative studies for both. And all of them are flawed. I've looked at them all. You don't have any fucking proof of this developmental shit. So quit talking about it. The way I see it is the reason that they keep mentioning the developmental problems with, you know, teenagers smoking marijuana, which is horse shit. That's such horseshit. You know what causes problems when you're growing up? This shit. That's why it, there's a limit. It says you have to be 21 to drink. And it's not because people under 21 are just more prone to fucking up or whatever. But it's just because you your developing brain will definitely get damaged from alcohol. So, and they've never proven any of this. What else do you got? How is marijuana bad? How is cannabis bad? It's not. So let's just talk about how it can help you in in a situation where opioids are wreaking havoc in your country. <laughs> well, 25% of people that, uh, that used to get prescriptions for opioids don't even get them anymore in medical marijuana states. And another like 10% takes... less opioids than they did before. So whatever, man. You can make any argument you want against marijuana. Just remember that really, for real, on-the-ground people know that that it's helping a lot with the opioid crisis, the opioid epidemic. Because if the doctor has a choice of sending somebody over to a medical marijuana, um, situation as opposed to going to the pharmacy to pick up some a brand new prescription for oxycontin if the doctor is not just trying to lie in his pockets he's going to go with the marijuana every time because he knows it works better and uh, it's far less addictive and that's it you know that's all you need to know right now but there's more to it marijuana actually probably helps to better the situation that's causing the pain in the first place. So they also had some patients there talking about their stories, and here's a testimony from a patient out of Maryland. Current law means that even though my family and I live in a state where medical marijuana is legal, my twin's pediatrician can't discuss what kind or how much they should take said Shannon Moore of Maryland, who provides medical marijuana to her young twins to treat a rare severe genetic disorder. It also means research is uh, suppressed on this medicine, despite what we know about its medical benefits. More, More than 20 health, veteran, and policy organizations have endorsed the bill, including the ACLU, Americans for Safe Access, Drug Policy Alliance, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, Marijuana Policy Project, the American Cannabis Nurses Act, uh, Association, Veterans for Medical Cannabis Access, Veterans for Peace, and Veterans for Safe Access and Compassionate Care. And you go ahead and put uh, the Daily Dope Show on the list, because why not? I mean, it's not <clears throat> reaching far enough, uh, but the federal government, if you want to know how the federal government feels about marijuana, Just listen to Jeff Sessions talk about it. That's pretty much what the marijuana policies in this country really are reflected the the best. He will basically start talking, and all of his rhetoric is like, oh, God, how are you so stupid, or why would you say something like that? You know, that's not true. But really, that's just what the federal government, where the federal government is at with this. And they don't want to be anywhere else, believe me. They get paid really good by a lot of lobbies from a lot of different areas to to hold this to hold the line against marijuana legalization and even medical marijuana. Don't think that the government on the federal level is starting to be compassionate about medical marijuana just because you've heard a few people around the campfire like, you know, uh, gee, I don't know, Mike Lee. <laughs> even Rand Paul. This is, you know, usually Rand Paul doesn't step out of the shadows and go to bat for marijuana. And, you know, last time I checked, his state has one of the worst medical marijuana programs it's about to roll out, and it hasn't rolled out yet, but when it does, it's going to be pretty sad. 
So, yeah, like I I could say over and over that this thing isn't going to go far enough and it's not, you know, you should take marijuana right out of the CSA and all this other stuff. But it's something, you know, I mean, and when we're talking about Jeff Sessions and Rosenberg and Rosenstein, when we're talking about those guys, we're not talking about anybody who gives a shit about, you know, anything other than enforcing federal law. That's what you keep hearing that over and over again from the Department of Justice, the DEA, the FBI. You got Department of Homeland Security talking about it. They're like, hey, man, as long as this shit's illegal and we find it on somebody or we do an investigation and we're investigating this stuff, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, seize the property, we're going to seize the marijuana, we're going to put people in jail, we're going to give them charges and court dates and possibly long prison sentences because that's, what, that's what's going on. And if you don't believe it, just listen to any of them guys. That's what they will fucking say every time. So if you have something like this, what will it do? Well, we'll find out. In a minute here. Americans for Safe Access Executive Director Steph Sphearer said in a statement, with the only protection for these states set to expire with the federal budget in September, <clears throat> a permanent solution to this conflict is urgent and necessary. Good luck, man. And as far as the House of Representatives goes, that's why it's, you know, I could sit here and say how, oh, this is it's not going far enough all I want, but come on, man. Do you think anything even remotely close to this but yet more, you know, offering more protections or taking it off the CSA or even bumping it down to Schedule 3 or some shit. Do you think any of this is going to happen in today's political environment with Republicans pretty much running Washington and most of the state's governorships and state's legislators? You got like a heavy, heavy police lobby and police you know, law and order kind of mentality going on in the Trump administration and it's just Congress is full of prohibitionists on the left and right side of the aisle. So is the Senate. You got senators and congressmen in states where marijuana is legal, for, for God's sakes, that are still prohibitionists. You got Democratic governors like Cuomo, prohibitionist. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't think think you're going to get anything better than this through but is this even going to get through that's what i keep saying is this even going to see the light of day well you can't have a federal activity when it comes to marijuana without running into these dicks fucking kevin sabat and you know we'll just go with sabat he's the only one he's the only one talking today and he time and time again I have to talk about this guy or I have to talk about Jeff Sessions. It's frustrating, man, because we were, we were on a good trajectory. And I'm not giving Obama credit. I'm not giving the Democrats credit. But I'm just saying, in a different political environment where science was a little bit more acceptable to, to use as your defense and your talking points, yeah, we were on our way to legalizing everything by 2020. Now, these assholes are trying to talk about, let's go back to 1980. Let's go back to 1975. Let's kick the fucking doors in. And by the way, we have mass surveillance in, in this country, a mass surveillance apparatus that basically can look at everything you do. And is it looking at everybody? Yeah, it is. We know that. And what is it doing with all this looking? Um, is it just looking at keywords and maybe if you got bombs and terrorism and uh, Allah Akbar and your shit you you get looked at again no <laughs> that's the old shit the, the new shit is they look at every fucking thing they find people that they like to look at and keep looking at their shit they're probably watching me right now hi guys um it's, it's a it's a really rough time that we live in for marijuana legalization because the people that wanted to keep marijuana illegal are now in power like big time and the Careers Act didn't stand a chance in 2015 when it was introduced under a, a Barack Obama presidency, even though at the time the House was Republican and the Senate was barely Democrat. 
we, it wasn't Democrat enough to get shit done, but it was definitely better than it is now. So, you know, good job fucking that up, guys. Um, was the Senate already overtaken by then? I thought it, I thought the Republicans took the Senate in 2016. I don't know. It's been a rough couple of years, guys. Um, so anyway, Sabat says no one wants to deprive chronically ill patients of the medication that could be helpful for them. But this bill would completely undermine the FDA approval process, encourage the use of marijuana and marijuana products that have not been proven either safe or effective. The FDA approval process should set the standard for smart, safe, and sound health care in our country, and we can be sure that patients are receiving the best treatments that do more than help or more help than harm. Tell that to the fucking forty to fifty thousand opioid deaths that are gonna happen this year. Or that happened last year, or the year before that, or the year before that. Sabat, you're you're just you, you're running out of ideas, man. And it's starting to show. The FDA, go to the FDA and, you know, make sure that they're okay with it. We already know that just regular old smoking joints is way, way medicine. It's it's medicine, straight up. That's all you need to know. How, what, do you, what needs to qualify it as medicine, by the way? Does it make you feel better? Yep, okay, then it's medicine. Tell me, tell me that fucking 90% of the pharmaceutical industries claims that this is going to make you feel better even work. Is it going to actually make you better? They, can't, they don't have anything that can say that. All they got is shit that fucking catches some of the fucking symptoms of what you got. They don't got anything to cure anything. You got to name it in the comments section below if you think I'm full of shit. What do they got that's curing anything? Nothing. They got band-aids and they got fucking gauze in case there's a really big hole. But they ain't fixing what's causing the hole. So whatever, man. <clears throat> the FDA, they ain't got shit. So if you and nobody trusts the FDA, come on, man. They said pink slime is food. The FDA is as corrupt as it can get. We've seen them in action being corrupt. So whatever, dude. Like whatever you say is so irrelevant because you're talking in a point in a frame point as if the FDA was like some kind of a thing that has a good proven track record of approving medicines that do more help than harm. As you say, there is countless examples of uh, pharmaceutical medicines that do more harm than help. You know, like even that one that helps you quit smoking, but a lot of people have committed suicide taking them Cialis or whatever the fuck they're called. So you take these pills and it kills the urge for your uh, nicotine Jones or whatever you want to call it. Well, that's really hardcore. That's really weird. <laughs> and after people started killing themselves, they had no choice but to say, oh, side effect, suicidal thoughts. So, uh, that, and by the way, that's still advertised. It's still on the market. You'll see a commercial for it, and then right afterwards, you'll see a commercial for the lawsuit against it. And that's how the pharmaceutical uh, industry operates these days. They make the shit out of something, and then the lawsuits start coming in. They start throwing settlement money out, and as soon as there's a, <clears throat> you know, there's a break-even point where they break even, and then they lose a little money, they go ahead and lose money and still run that shit into the ground. So they're like, all right, we're too, losing too much money. Get it out of there. I'm not lying, man. I've seen the numbers. So that's your pharmaceutical industry that the FDA tells you is all good. It ain't all good, man. It's bad. It's really bad. The FDA approves food that you eat, too, by the way. You tell me how much of that shit you trust. Okay? Spot continued, re responsible legislation that fat... Fast tracks these medications for those truly in need should be supported. Okay, now he's talking about CBD. So rather than diverting patients to an unregulated CBD market proven to be hawking contaminated or mislabeled products as medicine, as this bill would endorse, we support the development of FDA-approved CBD medications like Epidolex, which is in the final stages of approval. So you just want to take out all the grassroots people that are making real medicine in their homes because they know, they, they know how to do it because it's easy. It's all natural. You don't have to have a sophisticated fucking lab to extract CBD from a plant. But, 
Of course, Sabat is probably a mouthpiece for fucking uh, GB Pharmaceuticals that makes the Epidolax and whatever, man. We don't, you know what? No one listens to you anymore. I don't know how you think you got any kind of audience, man. There is absolutely nobody that takes your fucking words for anything but total horseshit. So fuck off, Kevin. Careers Act was originally introduced in 2015 and was first the first medical marijuana bill to be introduced into the U.S. Senate. Medical marijuana is legal in 30 states in the District of Columbia, and an additional 16 additional states have authorized cannabidiol oil for a narrow range of conditions. So that's that puts the total to 46 out of 50. First of all, can you say majority rules even on regular medical marijuana? Give me a fucking break, man. 30 out of 50. It's majority rules, guys. Shut up, FDA. We won. And if you look at population numbers, the medical marijuana states have way surpassed half the country. And the only four holdouts on CBD, man, you are some cruel motherfuckers. That is just sad. You're you're putting people in jail for helping their sick kids. Are you fucking sick yourselves in your heads? It's probably for Jesus or something, though. So what does the Careers Act actually do? It amends the Controlled Substances Act so that states can set their own medical marijuana policies. Um, I don't really believe you there. Jeff Sessions wouldn't believe you if he read this thing and then was like, you know what, it don't really do that, dude. Because you know what it didn't do? It didn't take marijuana out of Schedule 1. It just left it right in there. Like, fuck it. We're going to make it so, you, you know, we're going to amend the Controlled Substances Act to make exceptions for this and that and the other. I don't like it, guys. I don't like it whatsoever. It's it's just another thing that a hurdle in a court situation that the DEA would have to go over. Allow states to import CBD, a recognized treatment for epilepsy and seizure disorders. The Career Act amends the Controlled Substance Act to remove specific strains of CBD oil from the federal definition of marijuana. So this basically means interstate travel. Right now, like you had a Minnesota manufacturer selling uh, CBD products in New York State or some shit like that, and they got busted for it. This would prevent the, that bust from happening. Provide access to veterans. Current law prohibits doctors and Department of Veterans Affairs facilities from prescribing medical marijuana, which is bullshit. The Careers Act would allow VA doctors in states where medical marijuana is legal to recommend medical marijuana to military veterans. Which is why we need it to be legal in all states, because guess what? Your veterans are from all states. So is everybody. All people need medical marijuana. Expand opportunities for research. And I actually read this. It actually forces the, the government to begin conducting medical marijuana research that is FDA approved and guided. And I think at least three licenses have to be made by 180 days, like six months after this thing passes, if it passes. So it uh, removes unnecessary bureaucratic hurdles for researchers to gain government approval to undertake important research on uh, marijuana and create a system for the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services to encourage research. Um, I'm not going to read it. Thanks, Polly Washburn. I was going to say the new writer over at Cannabis, but she's already been there for six months or more, so good job with uh, the stories you've been doing. And, yeah, uh, the sponsors are a mixed bag, but, you know, it is what it is, guys. We gotta, We got to do what we can, man. There was a minute ago where Kyle from Secular Talk was, like, batting down the hatches. And I was like, man, everybody's overreacting about this Jeff Sessions guy. You know what I mean? He's going to get in there, and he's going to be like every other, you know, maverick that came into Washington. And once they got there and seen how it really works, they're just like, oh, shit. And I thought that's how entrenched um, marijuana legalization in states where it's legalized for medical reasons, especially it was, but as it turns out, it's a really fragile setup guys. I mean, I knew it all along, but every time someone said, you know, back two, three years ago, like when Colorado legalized, people were like, yeah, but the next president could come in and just flip the whole thing around. 
And then maybe it was the cannabis, maybe it was somebody else came out with an article not too long after that and was like, here's how they could do it. And then Jeff Sessions got into office and it's just like he read the fucking article. It was one, one step after another, you know, go after the coal memo, hit the Rarenbacher and fire amendment, um, make sure that, you know, you make a good case for marijuana being part of some kind of a violent uprising or some shit. Just, it's like the blueprint for disaster, you know, bringing us back to the 1980s style enforcement of marijuana would be, uh, a travesty could be the grounds for some kind of an uprising and i'm not even saying from people that that are marijuana enthusiasts or whatever i'm just saying there's a lot of money invested and in, at stake in the marijuana industry i'm not talking about a bunch of potheads sitting around going oh man you're not gonna make my weed illegal again motherfucker we're gonna rise up with the guns and the, the uh, pitchforks and torches and shit uh-uh Bunch of stoners ain't going to do that. They're going to be sitting back in their fucking living rooms looking at Twitter as it's happening, though. <laughs> I guarantee you that. Um, but, I mean, I'm just saying the industry itself, and I'm not even talking about the medical marijuana industry. I'm talking about California, Colorado, Massachusetts. You know, you got a lot of places now where I'm, I'm not just saying you got a lot of places like spread out throughout the country and there's just a lot of them it's a lot of places as in a lot of people california and in california pretty sure that even people that don't like weed aren't gonna like the federal government coming in there and flipping that shit upside down you know they're gonna start up pretty soon they're gonna start selling weed pretty soon they're gonna start tabbing up the numbers you're going to start seeing big numbers. You thought Colorado was putting some pretty impressive numbers out when it comes to medic- or, uh, recreational marijuana sales and tax revenues? Fuck. You ain't seen shit yet. Colorado's just a blip on the radar compared to California. California is the whole radar. And... <laughs> Come on, guys. This is... The only thing that we got in the legislature that really has a chance, you know, I talked about some other shit this year going on, like the respect states laws or the take marijuana right off a schedule. None of those guys are going to get out of the fucking, they're they're not even going to go to a committee. This thing right here has already been in committee a couple times. This thing's seen the light of day already. It was read twice and referred to the committee. Oh no, that's that's not true. These are these are blanks where all those ones are. So will it get to a committee? This is the Senate. A little better chance of it actually getting a look than the Congress, where thousands of bills come in every session and they probably only look at like a dozen or two. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't noticed, man, the Congress in the last ten or fifteen years has been pretty do nothing shitty. Ever since Bush got in there, it's been pretty much nothing going on in the Congress, man. They're not working for the American people. They're just doing whatever they can do to act like they're doing something or pass laws to let their billionaire buddies make more billions. So to even have one Republican on here is a fucking miracle. But, you know, Rand Paul's never a miracle when you see him stepping up for marijuana, but... It's always kind of a surprise because he's kind of taken a hands-off approach on a lot of marijuana issues, surprisingly enough. When it comes to hemp, however, he's been a pretty good uh, advocate. But marijuana, medical marijuana, he's barely there, man. Mike Lee, this guy, he's a hardline dick. Who knows? Um... I do remember reading that he had some kind of a personal situation that so now he has first hand knowledge of medical marijuana and that's how Republicans come around. All right guys, um you know, write your senators, tell them, "Hey, get on board with this shit." But I don't know, it's not going to do any good, but it, it, whatever little thing could do could help, I guess, but you know, 
you got to do what they tell you. Sessions said it, man. He's like, if you guys want me to stop acting like this, tell your congressman to legalize marijuana. I think everybody said that now. The Department of Justice has said that. Homeland Security said that. Can't we get Paul Ryan to call a vote on it since all these fucking people in the government are like, if you want to change the law, change the law. Let's change the fucking law, guys.